Hello everyone. We are going to talk about breaking up a home. It's in the book called The Literacy Toll on America. A poem for joy, a poem for pain. This book was nominated for eight literary awards by an inspiring young writer. The fan NJ, Omar Dyer, is that writer. Breaking up a home is about a family in poverty in the most deadly terrain places, places in America that people normally forget about what it's like to be black in America. It also raised a lot of questions. So, hope you enjoyed the story. It starts on 118 of the book, and here's the story. The day my mother was taken away was the worst day of my life. As a young man who had been oppressed by the nature and unwill of people, this is my story. We lived in a one-bedroom shack. It was a government home for poverty-stricken families. When we moved in this home, my father always said it would be temporary. We worked real hard for my moms and me while she went to school. I was with grandma all day and it happened one day. The day when they took my daddy away is one I'll always remember. I walked in the house as he sat on the couch. I came in the living room and I hugged him so hard. I was so proud I made him a card. Then he turned on the TV and was surprised. Mom jumped off the couch and said, What the fuck? I saw the face that Mom claimed was on TV. The face looked just like my daddy. Then someone knocked on the door. Mom went to the door. While well, Dad said, get on the floor. He pulled out a gun and said, be quiet, son. We are at war. Moms answered the door. It was our neighbor. That's when I found out my father was a thug. You should have seen my mother's mug. The complexion of her face changed the pace. What she didn't know would hurt our family. My mother was mad that the government was railroading her husband, who was my dad, and making him a criminal. This is when my mom and me found out what daddy's job was. My father was, God bless his soul, was a Bell's bondsman. He was a civil rights activist. He secretly fought for a better life for me. He fought for minorities' right to be free. My mom and me saw this face on TV. That's when I knew. That's when he might be the man to change history. Or be the birth of the man that led those that are oppressed, even though my father came after the dream. He believed in unity. That's when my mom was asked a question that changed our lives. The way we would live also made a change for the worse. The question she asked was, what do you do? And what did you work? My father said he had been a motivational and ominous writer. He said that he was writing letters to raise awareness on racial crimes in America. That is when my father noticed a gunman at our window. Ten gunmen rushed in our government apartment. They held guns to my mother's head while they held guns to my father's face. One of those gunmen made a move that I always remember for the rest of my life. This gunman wore a black jacket with bright yellow letters on it. My mother taught me how to recognize letters, and this is my try. Those letters said F B I, and they took my dad away. Mom said dad is dead after that day. I guess mom were right, because eight days later, my father was found dead in a ditch. Those gunmen said my father escaped, and they called it a fugitive killing. The bad part about it was they didn't allow us or anyone to view his body. Even my father's funeral service, it was closed and people couldn't see his body. My mother broke after the presumed death of my father. She just didn't care anymore. Men would come in and out of the home. The government house, my daddy, said it was going to be temporary, became permanent. They would leave mom's money and jewelry. They would come over and take my mother and make her scream and then they leave. One day those men came back. This time they came for me. I thought I was going to die too. I thought they were going to kill me like they did my father. 
I looked at their jackets to see if those letters were there. Then a lady showed up. She gave me candy and she said I was going to a better place. My mother started crying and screaming. She threw punches and said, don't take my son away, you motherfuckers. I started kicking and screaming because I didn't want to leave my mother alone. The lady said I was going to a better place where I can get a new daddy and mommy. I thought to myself that maybe this might be the last time I would ever see my mother again. This has been the worst life I could ever imagine because my mother three months later died. She died from an overdose of drugs and sex. I was only a child and my family didn't know anything about me. My mother was an only child and her parents died. My father was from up north with a huge family who didn't know I was born. I was placed in a system and given to a family that didn't want me. Just the government money. Then Sorry, we're going to presume on page 120, the sentence is, they didn't treat me right, so I kept my mouth shut. Then 10 years later, I left that house, got the gun, and went on a run. I became a thug. I would rob and steal, just so I could have a meal. I had sex with junk fiends, because I sold what they called dream killers. Then I met this teen. She reminded me of my mommy. One day, my girl said, baby, I'm pregnant. I didn't know what to do, so I moved to a familiar place. The thing took my face was the place was supposed to be temporary. We moved into a government housing complex because we needed a place to live. I couldn't believe it when I got my first grip. I know it was not the best, and I'm not a baby, but I must confess, this apartment is like a crib with bars on the windows. We stayed there for nine months while my girl went to school. I worked hard to put food on the table by working a late shift at a warehouse. I did this while my girl was sleeping and I slung drugs while she was at school. She knew I was a dealer because the money was her guru. She told me to stop once the baby was born. I told her I was still down. Since my job didn't give me uh, the right income or temporary home because it came permanent. We became a close family, and when my daughter was two uh, of age, me and my girl got married. Then one night, my wife said I'm pregnant. She told me she was four months pregnant. She said this one is a boy. Oh, the joy in my face as the little boy will be on my earthly space. Okay. We will take a break right here, and we will continue with more of Breaking Up a Home, which is a part of a literacy tour on America, a poem for joy, a poem for pain. This book is in stores at borders.com or the local store. You can also get it at Barnes & Noble's bookstore. The book's ISPN number is 1. Six zero four seven four six one seven three. This is one of the unique and remarkable books. Omar Dyer has been a remarkable writer. He has four other books in the making, and this book was a classic. And we hope you enjoyed this story. And stay tuned for more of the story called Breaking Up a Home, Black in America.